Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about the Federal Reserve and the fact that they lowered interest rates this week. This week, for the first time in a decade, the Fed lowered interest rates. After more than a year of pressure from the White House, the Fed reduced the benchmark lending rate by a quarter of a point this week. Unlike the European counterparts in Japan, which both have maintained interest rates low over the last several years, the Federal Reserve has been trying to normalize rates so that if and when a downturn in the economy hits, they actually have some tools to stimulate the economy with. Right now, Europe and Japan don't have those tools any longer because they've maintained rates at essentially zero, or in many cases negative, so they don't have any tools left with which to create fiscal stimulus apart from printing more money. Two of the Federal Reserve governors dissented on the decision to lower rates. This is a rare situation because normally rate decisions bring a unanimous vote from the governors of the Federal Reserve. So why exactly did they lower rates? The U.S. economy is doing pretty well. It's continuing to grow. Now, the 3% growth that was reported by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics for the first quarter turned out actually not to be accurate. That number got revised downward to 2% in recent weeks. So while the American economy is strong, it's not quite as strong as has been previously reported. Some sectors of the American economy are showing some signs of weakness, but we are by no means in a recession at this point. What is striking is that inflation is appearing to be fairly low, at least in terms of price increases and wage increases as reported by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, and we all know that those numbers are fudged a little bit. One of the ways governments use inflation is to devalue the currency, to devalue the monetary buying power of the currency. That's another form of a tax. It's a way of taxing the population without them actually seeing it come out of their pocketbook. And if inflation is running below the target, then the devaluation of the currency isn't happening quite fast enough, and governments don't have the ability to operate with the same kind of deficits as they had in the past. Federal Reserve cited global economic slowdown as part of the reason for their dropping of interest rates. And their guidance for future rate meetings was left very uncertain. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell basically said, don't count on future rate decreases. If you put that aside, this is still something very good for real estate investors. We ourselves are just in the process of refinancing a building that we completed earlier this year. The building is almost fully leased up and we've initiated the refinance process. We are getting very, very attractive quotes from the banks that we've been talking to. One recent quote that we received on a commercial rate of 4.5% for a five-year term at 75% loan to value seems pretty attractive. We're talking to another lender that may give us a slightly lower rate perhaps as low as four and a quarter, although we have yet to see that term sheet. It is possible to get lower rates if you go with an insured loan. However, that requires typically a longer income history. So when you're dealing with new construction, often you're going to be required to provide several years of income history, which means dealing with a higher interest rate and a conventional commercial loan for at least the first couple of years, perhaps as much as the first three years of a project. An interest rate in the range of four and a quarter to four and a half percent is something that we're actually pretty happy with. This is a great window of opportunity over the next 60 to 90 days to rate lock at some lower rates and get the best financing terms possible. In recent months, lenders have become much more conservative in their underwriting. Some of them are only offering 15 or 20 year amortization. In other cases, they're offering by default a five year term. Don't be afraid to negotiate longer terms, that is, maybe ask for a seven year term with your lender or ask to extend the amortization period, maybe from 15 to 20 or from 20 to 25 lenders often are willing to negotiate that. Don't just assume that because their term sheet says 20 years that you're stuck with a 20-year amortization. You can often ask for more. It's not always just about the interest rate. And the final term for you to focus on is to look at the prepayment penalties. What will it cost you if you decide to terminate this loan and refinance into a different loan package before the end of the term? Some banks charge an interest differential penalty in addition to a prepayment penalty. If you're negotiating loan terms, Pay close attention, not just to the interest rate, but all of the terms of the loan. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.